So now test two is actually going to work correctly. This one will not. This one will not work correctly, but test two will populate correctly. Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess and I'm a Power Platform developer. So next week I'm gonna be at the Power Platform Conference. So if you see me, feel free to say hi. Uh, I'd love to say hi to anybody who knows me or watches my videos. So that means I may miss one week of doing a video, but after that I'm going to come back with all the information that I can find at the Power Platform Conference. Today what I wanted to go over was, it seems that people are still struggling with combo boxes. And I know there's tons of videos out there on combo boxes, but I was thinking, okay, there's a new modern control. Maybe we'll try the new modern control combo box out. We'll use some of the old combo boxes. For this video, I'm just going to use a SharePoint data source. Um, it may be different depending on what data source you're using, if you're using Dataverse or SQL or, or SharePoint or even Excel. All right, so all I have is a, a basic button, a save button. It's got nothing in the on select yet, but let's insert a new combo box right here, the new modern style. All right, so we have our new combo box in here. Let's put some items in the property manually. So I'm just going to say we milk, eggs, peanuts, soybeans, and fish. All right, so we put some items in there manually. So now when we come in here, we can select one and it's only allowing us to select one right now. So I believe if we go to the advanced properties, there is an option here called select multiple. And so if we come up here, we can find select multiple here and we can say true. All right, so now in our combo box, oh, it comes with a little checkbox now, I, I really like that. We can select multiple and you can see it's actually showing everything in there. So you don't really have to pull in. Let's see what happens if it's too small. So if it's too small, it just kind of cuts it off now instead of saying, you know, three items, four items. So that's one benefit of the new modern control. Let's take out, let's check out the classic control. So insert the classic control of a combo box. We'll take the same items. And paste those in there. Okay, so now when we select multiple and we run out of room, it just says five items. So that's kind of the difference between the modern and the classic. If we wanted to pull this out, let's say if we wanted to pull this out and put it, put it into a text field, a text label, what we want to do is we want to concat. And so we'll just say concat, and it's like concatenate. Concat the combo box one dot selected items, so all the items that are selected with the value, so the value in there, and then uh, maybe a comma with a space. So now we can see that we pulled that out of there. So let's do the same thing with the other combo box. Let's see if the same thing happens. So instead of combo box one, we'll say combo box canvas one. So same thing happens there. We can pull that out into a text field in case we run out of space with our combo box. All right, so let's do it again without manually putting in our data. So let's insert another combo box, but this time the modern one. And this time I want the choices of my allergies multi-select. So in SharePoint, this is a choice field. It's called allergies multi-select and it is a multi-select choice field. So in SharePoint, it's set up as checkboxes that allows multiple selections. So let's try and pull in those allergies multi-select. So an easy way to get that formula and an easy way for you to always figure things out is to just pull in the, the edit form. Pull in the edit form and connect to your data. And then you see here the allergies multi-select come to it. And then you can see what they have in here in the items property. Right, so they have choices at menu, allergies select multiple. So all we have to do is unlock that form, take this formula in the items property, 
delete the form, come back to our dropdown, and paste it in. Now when we press play, we have our choices already in there. So that was just really easy. Like I, you don't have to memorize all the formulas in Power Apps. Go to that edit form, check it out, and, and then write you know, the choices that come from that multi-select field. So both of these are single line text, right? So we can write these to SharePoint. So on my save button here, I can patch my menu, that's the name of my SharePoint list. And then title, we'll just say um, test one. And then for allergies, I'm gonna write this label because to me that's, that's simple. So this is label, we'll rename this to label two. This is gonna be label two. So allergies is label two dot text. Okay, so now when I hit save, it's gonna write test one for the title and then it's gonna write my label two. So if we go to SharePoint, you can see that we have test one and we have written the allergies out on to the single line text field. Okay, so now let's patch the allergies multi-select field. So now in the save button, we also want to patch allergies, multi-select, and this is going to be what we have selected. And let's select multiple in there. We got to turn on select multiple on this one. So I'll do it on the right side this time, true. So we'll just select a few things in there. And now let's patch that to the data source. And then we say the combo box, and I believe this is canvas two. So that's this one here highlighted in green. And then we're gonna say selected items. Okay, so this is gonna create another new line because I'm not uh, patching onto the old one, but this will create a new line. I hit save. We go back to SharePoint, refresh. We can now see I've created a new line of those same fields and what I had selected, and now it's populated the multi-select cho uh, choice field. All right, so I'm gonna slide everything over to the side. So now let's work on the default. Okay, now let's do the default selected item of the combo box when I select one. So right now, when I select anything, it's not changing. So let's change the default selected items of this combo box. All right, so right now, it's a record and we're concatenating it into a string. So in allergies, this is just a string. So you have to be very careful. You notice how my blank and then a comma is? That's how I split it up and that's probably wrong. I probably wanted to do a comma and then a space. But this is just where you can mess up and this is good that I messed up. So you see here, it's a blank and then a comma. So what I'm gonna do is in the split, or in the default selected items, I'm going to split the text value. What is the text value? That's what I have selected in my gallery one, dot selected dot allergies, right? And then what am I splitting it by? I'm splitting it by a space and then a comma. And so now that has populated my drop down here. When I wrote also in the text value, you can see I did a space and then a comma. It, I probably had this wrong. It's probably a comma and then a space is how it should be. So let me do that on both of these. That's how it should be. And this time we'll do uh, test two. So let's save. So if we go back to SharePoint and refresh, we have my test two down here. You notice it's a space or a comma and then a space. And these are a space and then a comma. This is something that may mess you up. So now when we select things, you'll notice that it is populating correctly. And now when you click on it, we can see we have milk, eggs, peanuts. It's selected correctly. But when I go to click on test two, the one where I change the spaces, you'll notice that it populates like this. And that, that's not what we want. That's all because of the commas that we selected in there, all because of that space and then the comma. So actually what we want is we want a comma and then a space. So now test two is actually going to work correctly. This one will not. 
this one will not work correctly, but test two will populate correctly. So what we needed to do is make sure that space in the comma is correct, or don't even add a space maybe. Maybe you don't want a space in there at all. It's all about how you split it and concatenate it. And maybe that's something that's driving people crazy, why it's not populating correctly. So you have to be very careful with your spacing if you're using semicolons, if you're using commas, make sure that those match exactly. Okay, so now let's get into the um, one that's actually a choice field. So what's the default selected here? So when if we do gallery one dot selected dot allergies multi-select, if we do that, then it just populates correctly. So that's because it is a choice field and it's not that single line text. All right, so that's how you do it if you want to patch. Now let's kind of keep going and let's say we wanted a form. We have a form here, we connect to our menu, we have our fields, and let's put in a new gallery also. So if we go to items of our form, we'll be gallery two, dot selected. All right, so we have our gallery on the left side, we have our form on the right side. So now when we click on things, it then populates the values that are in there and we can see it does it by default right it just populates everything by default maybe if we make this a little bit bigger so we can see everything okay so now in our form our out-of-the-box form let's convert this text box into a combo box so I'm gonna unlock it I'm gonna delete it I'm gonna insert a combo box I'm gonna write in the items that we had in here before we have the same items that we had before but now we've replaced the field with a combo box now for the red X's this is fine this is just the Y property I'm gonna get rid of that for now and now the update property is going to be this is where we can cat again so concat the combo box three that selected items and then we want the value and then the comma and I'm gonna remove the space just to keep it simple so no spaces in there now you have to be very careful when you add the spaces we went through all that before so now when we select multiple and we hit save I just made the save button submit form so it's just submit form the new form and when we hit save on test one we refresh we can see it wrote milk wheat and eggs but if you notice it's not populating the default selected items okay so in the default selected items so once again we can just do split the gallery two dot selected dot allergies with the comma okay so now when we select things it then populates we can see that things are actually selected. We can hit save, which is going to submit form. So on test two, we have four peanuts, soybeans, fish, and wheat. Test two, we now have peanuts, soybeans, fish, and wheat. And so now we have that all selected. So to me, this is just the easiest way there. I've shown other ways to do it, but to me, the easiest way is just to do the concat function and then the split function if you're going to convert out of a combo box and use a text field right here. So when we concat, this is combining into one text field. And this is splitting. Obviously, it's splitting, right? Uh, the text field, the one text field into multi-select. And always remember that this comma and the spacing on the concat needs to match the split function comma also. If this is a semicolon, it needs to match as a semicolon. If there's a space at the front, it needs to match the space in the front. Remember to match the commas, the separators values. Be very careful there because that has thrown me off and made me, you know, for hours trying to figure out what's going on. And this is only needed when you're trying to convert a combo box into a text field or a text field into a multi-select. 
If you're gonna stay nice and simple and you're just gonna use the out of the box functionality, the default selected items is just right there. The items property also is a little bit different. It uses the choices and you can find that right in the default form. All right, so finally, I hope that helps you uh, with your combo boxes and your converting to text fields and using them. If you ever are getting confused about if you're in edit form, a new form, create yourself a variable. But I am gonna be out next week. I will be at the Power Platform Conference. If you're there, feel free to say hi. Else, I'm gonna collect as much info as I can and bring it back and share with all of you. Thank you, my name is Andrew Hess. I'll see you next time.